Jane Dolan. Angela Stevens. Kirk Hansen. My name is Jay Patterson, and I'm proud to work for Halliburton. My name's Ben Carter, and within the first week of being in Iraq, I knew that that wasn't going to be the company that I wanted to be with. Halliburton was hired to provide clean, safe cooking, cleaning, shower water for the military. One of Halliburton's employees saw something wiggling in the water in his toilet bowl. So I went and tested the water in our water storage tanks. There was no chlorine in them, none. The water we showered in every single day was extremely contaminated. And when I talk about contaminated water, I'm saying malaria, typhus, uh, giardia, cryptosporidium. I mean, the list is really, really long. Halliburton is accused by its own employees of exposing troops to contaminated water in Iraq. When I tried to notify the troops that they may be exposed to a serious health risk, I was told that the military was none of my concern. They were only concerned with making their profit and didn't care how it may affect the troops. Of the 67 water treatment plants that Halliburton run, 63 of them weren't providing safe water. And the Marines are showering in it every single day. Sorry. I was there to help them. There's a lot of soldiers over there. They might come home without a bullet wound, but there's a lot of them that are going to come home with pathogens in their blood because of Halliburton. And they don't even know to get tested for it uh, unless somebody tells them. And I'm sure Halliburton is not going to be the company to tell them. When I joined Halliburton, I knew I was going to work on some big things. We put out a few fires at work, once ran into a small challenge of getting some supplies to our troops, but the biggest thing, serving our troops good old American food. So they feel just a little closer to home. How come you don't go to the hall? How much time you spend online? At least, at least. An hour. An hour. An hour for food? An hour, an hour in the sandstorm for food? <laughs> Tell me about that line over there. What, what line am I looking at right now? That line is for the chow hall, where you eat. Several times, dining halls were attacked. All it takes is one Iraqi that's an insurgent, and because they knew what times we were going to eat every day, they knew when to expect to hit. And that happens because KBR won't go to a 24-hour feeding schedule where they just always have food ready. They won't do it because it saves them money. Because they get paid by how many soldiers they feed, not by how many soldiers they save. Feeding the troops. The Pentagon has found some serious problems with Halliburton's work on that contract as well. Pentagon auditors found that a Halliburton contract to provide food and housing for American troops had a staggering $1.8 billion in unsupported costs. It was all a scam. Halliburton was charging. $45 for a seats pack can of Lucre Pepsi that they give us and the military free in the mess hall. Now these sodas were made right there in the desert. It's not as if they were brought over from the United States. These sodas were made with Arabic wraps, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, whatever, right there in the desert. So it's not as if they had an exorbitant transportation rate. They had the, the little mobile units that we had to put our clothes in like a net duffel bag. Halliburton charged government $100 for every bag of clothes they washed. Whenever we got our laundry back, it felt worse than when we turned it in. Everything was still grimy. I stopped taking my laundry into KBR, and instead, I was washing it in the sink. And I was told by my chain of command that I was not allowed to wash my laundry on my own. I had to take it to KBR to have it washed, even though we all knew that they were doing a horrible job because they get $99 a bag for a bag of laundry that I could do at home for $3. 
the legal way of stealing from the government or taxpayers' money. The Pentagon audit released last night that found the company is overcharging taxpayers. Halliburton Company billed taxpayers for its contract work in Iraq. It is your money that's being used. These contracts are managed under a system called Cost Plus, which is the opposite of trying to save money. It guarantees that everything that you buy will be paid back and reimbursed if it's seen as justified, and you'll be given a profit in addition. A Cost Plus arrangement that critics say leaves little incentive to save. The more taxpayer dollars Halliburton spends, the more Halliburton makes. Cost Plus encourages you to run up the cost of a program because you are going to get a percentage of the, the end result. And so there's no incentive to stay at Motel 6. Stay at the Ritz-Carlton uh, in Qatar, folks. The place that they chose for orientation in Kuwait was a huge resort set right on the ocean. Had, I think, three swimming pools. So it was better than the Wyndham in Texas or the Ritz. It was fancied up. Marble floors, mahogany woodwork. It was just beautiful. They had sea dews, jet skis they could use. You could go and rent wave runners and go out and play in the water. We were renting wave runners, and we got paid by the hour to do it. I was told this, don't question it, enjoy it. Several government agencies are currently investigating if Halliburton overcharged for work already completed in Iraq. They had five-star meals catered in every day. It was so lavish. Rows of vegetable platters, beef platters, fish platters. It's a cost plus contract. KBR looked at it, the more money we spend, that's more money we get in our pockets. We had it made over there compared to the military. I mean, those guys were living in tents and we had air-conditioned private hooches. The tents that we were staying in were completely moldy and everybody was getting sick with respiratory infections. They're getting paid millions of dollars. Why can't they even give us a tent that doesn't make us sick to live in it? The soldiers are sleeping on these little cots out in the middle of the desert. While well, these KBR executives are driving these $40,000 vehicles. They and their secretaries are driving at least a thirty dollars to $40,000 vehicle. This secretary lives in this complex, eats her meals in this complex, has her laundry delivered to her, has no reason to go anywhere at any time, but has a brand new top-of-the-line Ford or Chevy pickup with everything imaginable on it that you could put on it. Chrome rims and leather interior and CD players and all these extra amenities that, you know, you don't really need in wartime. Why do they need an H-2 Hummer? Why do they have Cadillac Escalades in Iraq for Halliburton managers? What is the purpose? One invoice that I saw was for about $7,000 for one month for a SUV on a lease. It was a three-year contract comes up to uh, roughly $250,000. A vehicle that you and I could purchase at the local dealership for probably top of the line $45,000. And the taxpayer paid $250,000 and never did own the vehicle. They got the wrong equipment, ordered the wrong stuff. Computers still in boxes, new vehicles. They'd push them out in what they called burn pits, and they just set it on fire, claim it as a loss, get more money for the right equipment or the right stuff they needed. Why would you need to order somebody else's wrong equipment just because somebody pays you to do it? And you burn it and destroy it. You got brand new trucks over there, and there's not even oil filters. So when the motor blows, what do you do? Buy a new truck and build the government. $75,000 truck. They wouldn't even have a spare tire to fit it. And we had to blow it up. And they didn't care how to burn it because the government's paying for it. We knew that every day that a vehicle broke down, we would have to destroy it. And these are maybe $80,000 vehicles, maybe $100,000. You know, they're expensive trucks. We're burning fuel in front of Iraqi people. We're not really doing anything to help, and we just have to follow the orders. 